All right, guys, welcome back to Welcome to This. Uh, that's the name of the podcast. Uh, you've never been on it before? I've never been on it. It's my first time on. Dude, that's the name we're rolling with. Welcome to this. I like it. I like Welcome to This. Why not? It's yeah. simple. I don't know what it means. My yeah. buddy came up with it. He's like, roll with that. Yeah. Uh, guys, uh, my name is Brandon Barrera. I'm the host of the podcast. I'm running it with my buddy Patty Samaha, Patty Clips. He's in the studio. Today we're joined by a very special guest, uh, Che Duran, everybody. Thanks for having me, man. Dude, hell yeah. We don't really know each other too well. No, no, no. We've crossed paths once. We hit it off with something, though. What did we talk about? We were talking about, it had to be something like strip clubs or something. Something. Canada. Yeah. We we were hitting off at New York Comedy Club. Just yeah. talking about like something Dune, about that. Maybe? sports. We talking about sports. Could have been that. It was we found a thread. I remember yeah. we found a thread. Are you a video game guy? Uh, not. I used to be when I was no, a kid. No, maybe then it wasn't that. It wasn't that. I, I was can... a, I was a video game guy during the pandemic. I got back into it. Oh yeah, dude. Well, because I was making I was making like more money than I ever have in my yeah. entire life off unemployment. Yeah. And I was living in a studio apartment in Los Angeles with two of my best friends. Yeah. So we were like, we need something to do besides just drink all day. So we we're like, let's add video games. So and it's a great thing to add. Why not? Oh, so, yes. so I bought PS4 and I bought uh, MLB The Show. Nice. That's a great one. So you like build yeah. your team. You fucking oh, like, yeah. yeah, total sim of like, we're doing everything baseball. That's oh, yeah. a good one to get in. That'll eat up a lot of time. Dude, we were getting hammered like every day. Like every night we were like, ah, I got playoffs tonight. <laughs> 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 you want to sit on top bug and watch me win the World Series? Dude, I love that. That's so fucking good, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have like a video game? that you gravitate towards? Oh, anything. anything. I, I, I play video games religiously. Yeah. I, I listen to a, um, a daily video game podcast. It's a, every, Really? Yeah, what's Monday to Friday. It's called Kind of Funny Games. Kinda they funny and they games. just do updates on what's going on in video game news, the culture, all that stuff. Like, I'm I'm deep. I I might be back in the game next year. Mm -hmm. I'll get a PS5 for Grand Theft Auto. Oh, yeah. Grand Theft Auto 5, everyone's getting it. Yeah. Grand Theft Auto 5, I've said this. Six. Uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto 6. Yeah. Yes. Grand Theft Auto 6 will be, I've said this before, and so fucking I'm I'm saying it in as many places as possible, so I got it recorded. Okay. It's gonna be the biggest like pop culture event of all time. Like it like you know when people talk about when Thriller came out, everyone like watched the yeah. Thriller premiere and everyone was talking about Thriller and it was like this huge thing that sh like v like vibrated through society. Grand Theft Auto 6, every podcast you listen to, every news channel, every fucking like you won't be able to get away from this game for months. It's going to every time you're at a show, there's going to be a circle of comedians talking about Grand Theft Auto 6. Every you're at work, at the gym, every this game is going to be it is going to be the biggest definitely entertainment p thing that has ever came out it cost them a billion dollars to make grand theft auto 5 made a billion dollars in a weekend or like in three days this game's probably going to make a billion dollars in a day or more and then that's not even including all the fucking online shit they're gonna make money off of dude it, I, mean, I mean like the fucking trailer had like a billion views in like a week it's huge yeah. it is you like people don't fucking understand how big this thing's gonna be it is you're gonna be sitting in circles of comics being like did you go over here did you see this guy did you do, 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 do? it's gonna be like when you were a kid and you played video games you went on the playground you were all talking about this shit pre-internet yeah that's how it's gonna feel dude yeah and we're i'm pumped about it because i i didn't know this until somebody brought it up to me i'm from south florida okay yeah so my house is in it yeah okay sick so like we're like all my friends call me they're like all right who's going to like our favorite bar is twin peaks which yeah. is like a glorified hooters yeah yeah, yeah. so we're, we're like oh, who's gonna go to twin peaks in the game yeah who's meeting me at bimini bay bar who's going to brands out you know what i mean like everybody's like talking about just like how it's, you know, all the places we grew up, like how they're going to digitize it. Oh, it's going to put Florida, like Florida culture on is going to be on the mat. Like Florida culture already has been on the upswing in yeah. a huge way. I like Florida a lot. Yeah. I'm not from Florida or I, I'm from Canada, yeah. but I've been to Florida like a bunch for shows. I love Florida. It's a good vibe. It's like, they're like, oh, the Republicans, but they're not conservatives. They they're, don't. They don't. They don't care. No, no, they don't care. They're like, I just don't. They're like, I don't want to pay taxes, and I fucking want to ride a jet ski, and I want to do drugs and have a gun. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can get behind that. Yeah, no, uh, I tell that to people all the time because when I when I moved out of uh, Florida to go to L.A., people, yeah, people look at you. They're like, oh, you're from Broward County, Florida, like mm -hmm. where Kodak Black is from. I'm like, yeah, like. That's an insane place. And I'm like, I guess, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We have like a big guitar. In, have you seen the guitar, the hard rock hotel? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It, we call that our Eiffel Tower. Nice. You, I know love that. Like, yeah. you don't, you don't realize that you leave how white trash it is, but yeah. like I go back, I do shows all the time there and it, I love it. I'm it's just like, oh, I miss it. It's this. fun. Like, uh, putting out there, of course, there's stuff I don't agree that Florida does, yeah. but it's like, man, they got fucking Disney World. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's fucking go, dude. dude we yeah. go like Disney? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's how we grew up. My mom yeah. would just wake me up and be like, get up, get in the van. We're going to Disney. Well, Disney I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, dude. And then you don't realize that you leave. Like, I talk to people all the time. I'm like, you never been to Disney? And they're like, no, dude, we don't just get to go whenever we want. I'm yeah. Like, ah, that makes sense. It's it's a fun time. It's a fun time. Good food. Uh, I really like Tempe. Tempe's a place where I could see myself as long as like the world stops getting hotter. Tempe, uh, Arizona? Uh, or not Tempe. Uh, Tampa. I'm Tampa. 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 Yeah. Tampa, Tampa yeah. Fucking fun. That Ebor. Yeah, Ebor dude, City. The Ebor, I was there. I was like, I fucking love this place. Yeah. There's, if you've never been to Ebor, there's all these loose roosters that run around. Because they, <laughs> what I heard was like, like a hundred years ago, there's all these farms. And then they, they made the farms shut down or some shit. So these farmers just released the roosters. And they're just running around. And then, then the city made them a protected animal. So you can't fucking kill these roosters. So they run around almost like you're like, oh, they're like, it's kind of like majestic y. But then you see them around trash and you're like, oh, they're like raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> They've turned into it. Yeah. They've turned into raccoons. And it, the city almost feels like um, New Orleans. It's like old buildings. They have those like fucking balcony type things. Like the improv there is this old old ass uh, theater. It, they, it, they've been doing shows for something. I'm going to get this wrong, but it's like 400 years or some shit. It used to be like old play thing and then they changed it into a different thing and it's, it's done shows there for hundreds of years. Mm. Um, and they even have those like fucking Abraham Lincoln booths. You know, like those. Because yeah. it's a double decker. Yeah, it yeah. It is a double decker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so sick. That's, uh, that venue fucking rules, dude. That's so funny that yeah. you say that because you hear nightmares about that place from like other comics. Oh, what? The, uh, the Oh, it was a wild show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Dude, the Tempe show, like man, that I uh, one of the rowdiest crowds I've ever had. It was hard to get jokes out because they were so drunk and reckless. Yeah, uh, but I loved it. It was very, very fun. And um, fuck, oh, and also Tempe has that thing about it. Tampa, Tampa. Tampa. I keep saying Tampa. <laughs> Tampa. They're virtually same vibe. Close, close yeah, yeah, to yeah. the same word. Um, but they uh, Tampa has that thing about the the burial ground. Do you know this? No. So there's like I can't remember what it's called, but there's an urban legend about uh, Tampa where Tampa is. It should get flooded but it doesn't and every time a hurricane hits it is it never it's fine. it's fine and they say it's like this aboriginal burial ground that protects it's like the ghosts protect the tampa does it does it have anything to do with like the history of like the uh the pirates coming there uh, I don't years know. ago i don't know about the pi uh, if it has anything to do with the pirates yeah because they have like a big pirate culture there yeah yeah they know? do yeah yeah the buccaneers you've yeah. been to you've been to gasparilla no but i heard about gasparilla i'm like that sounds like a fucking sick Dude, time it's nuts yeah i mean like just house parties like you couldn't even imagine how many just up along uh, bay shore boulevard yeah and uh just everybody opens up their house everybody's looking like a pirate you're walking up and down getting wasted walking in people's houses yeah swashbuckling dude yeah literally yeah, yeah. and then and then, uh, tampa's got a big like strip club culture yes they do so like and they're good clubs yeah so it's like you're all day just looking like a fucking idiot and then you yeah. go everybody goes to the strip club just gets absolutely yeah and just like the hottest annihilated. strippers ever yeah uh, Fuck, mods yeah. Ve shout out mods venus let's go shout out mods venus don't you guys have one out there that has like uh, a spaceship in it yeah that's that's mons venus is that mons venus, mons venus. okay yeah yeah, 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 yeah when yeah. i was there they're like you got to go to the one with the spaceship yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah one time the last time we were there uh, my buddy tried to get in and, and like, we were all trying to get in, but, uh, my buddy was in the back of us and we all get in the bouncer looks at him. He goes, I'm not letting him in. And we're like, why? And he goes, he peed his pants. Oh. And it was like during Gasparilla, we looked and he's like fully got just like a fucking like piss mark just running down his legs. And he's like, he's hammered. He's looking at the guy like, what? what? <laughs> we well, can't piss your pants anymore. <laughs> and then so my other buddy goes, well, if he can't get in, I'm not getting in. And then took a stand and he peed his pants. Oh. And we're like, Sam, like, no. Like, piss protest. Hey, piss protest. We're like, get in, the van, get in the car. We had to like take him to the truck. <gasps> Dude, yeah. that's so funny. I was at a, I was at a place in New York. It was like a bunch of us. We're all drinking, hanging out. And one of the guys was like very drunk yeah and he was like clearly like kind of too drunk and he's like oh i'm gonna step outside for a bit he steps outside pukes right in front of the bouncer and the bouncer's like i'm not letting you in and we're like ah fuck, <laughs> yeah yeah he's just ruining it for everybody well we just went to another bar yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and then that bar is like clearly like they don't even check yeah yeah, yeah they're like fine. get in Wyatt. get in there you're yeah, fine yeah yeah, yeah yeah dude that's fucking hilarious um yeah tampa's fucking awesome dude. yeah yes brill is something to see it's basically like mardi gras of the south yeah i love that i love that yeah. man and fucking in terms of travel shit i got a big Big trip planned up. I got. A, what do you got? I'm going to Japan. Really? I've always yeah. wanted to go. Me too, dude. It's yeah. like been my number one destination for a long time. And it's you just keep postponing, postponing, blah blah blah. Of course. I went 
went to Greece and Berlin this past summer. What'd you think? I, I was there as well. Uh, Greece, I really liked. I was with my sister for the Greece trip um, because I was there for a wedding. And she's always wanted to go to Greece. She was supposed to go to Greece like 20 years ago and then never did. Mm. And she's always been like, I want to go to Greece. I want to go to Greece. So I was like, just come with me. So I took her to Greece. Uh, we had a great time. But it's like, you're with your sister. I'm not fucking doing anything too crazy. And she's also a mom and like she doesn't go nuts. Right. So w it was a pretty chill time there. Great food. Yeah. Food, unbelievable. It is awesome. Um, the, I had like the best fucking uh, old fashioned I've ever had in my life. Okay. Went to this one bar. There was like no one there. They're like, oh, it's like it was like a Tuesday. And we fucking drank our faces off. This guy made this like old fashioned that was like a dessert old fashioned. It was yeah. like sweet. And he put this like little uh, almond or not almond, uh, fucking, um, fucking, what's it called? You have a like a raisin cookie. Was it? it's oatmeal raisin? Okay, like an oatmeal raisin cookie, like in it, and then so you would uh, like drink your drink and then eat this cookie, and it was oh, I think about that drink like uh, once a month at least. That's the best one. Like uh, like uh, cocktail servers like take their time. Yeah, it's something they do shit you've never seen, and you're we're the only ones there. Yeah, and so it's like fucking. They were like making us the bet. My sister had this thing with it was called like a Hugo or something like that, yeah. and she went out and like bought the ingredients to make the drink when she got back home because she was like, this drink's fucking amazing. Was it the exact same? Uh, I don't know if it was the exact yeah, same, yeah, 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 yeah. But she did it the best she could, you know. Yeah, dude, that's the best. Like I remember when I first moved to New York, I went to this uh, went to this bar and got. Uh, Japanese old fashioned, yeah. like Japanese whiskey old fashioned, yeah. toki stuff, whatever. Yeah. And this, like, the way she was making it was like regular old fashioned. Then she took out like a blowtorch and yeah. like like fried like these like I don't know like garnishes. Yeah, and then like sprinkled it on top. And I was like, I've never seen that, but I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. just the fact that she used the blowtorch, I was like, this is infinitely the best drink I've ever had. Yeah. Um, what part of Greece did you go to? Uh, we were in we were in Athens for yeah. like four days, and yeah. then we went to Crete for. three three or four days okay. um and we were that was where the wedding was at wedding was super fun crete's beautiful but a little bit more of a tame island we went to this cool gorge like we drove like across to the other side of the island and it was like you like hike oh this was fucked though so we <laughs> when we went to go to this gorge there's all this place where you pull off and it's like yeah the gorge is down here and so we hike down like there's no path we're right. literally like climbing over rocks i'm in flip-flops i know i'm hung over right and so we're like climbing down these rocks and then we're like walking through this like cavern and it's all rocks, all fucked up. It's not easy to walk. I'm in fucking flip flops. At one point, I'm like, we're climbing shit. And I'm like carrying stuff. I'm like, I gotta leave some of this stuff behind. I can't. And so I like leave the water, and we keep <laughs> I never leave the water. Never leave the water. <laughs> So we keep hiking and we're walking through this thing for like 45 minutes because it's like so rocky. The terrain's so bad that it's taking so long to walk through. And at, and we start looking around. There's like this weird sort of like, I don't even, it's almost like wool that's like all over the rocks. And we see like a, like a fucking um, goat carcass, mm. like a piece of a, and I'm like, I, there's a fucking creature in here. <laughs> and we're yes. going to fucking, that yeah. is how a horror movie starts. You left the water, weird shit. We eventually get to this gorge and then we learn that there's a, perfect staircase like if we had drove like a minute further down the road that's where the actual fucking entrance is yeah so you so, made it harder on yourself for no reason for no reason but we didn't know there's no <laughs> signs yeah. there's nothing yeah so we then we hiked down to this gorge and it's like like uh, a cold plunge and like this gigantic like overhead rocks with like all these vines and shit and like a waterfall pouring down into it yeah. it was gorgeous it was very very fucking cool yeah greece does have like those little like pockets of or, like beaches that you yeah. can like, check out that you wouldn't know about unless you talk to a local to like, yeah. go find yeah so we fucking we did the gorge and we did all the greece stuff the food unbelievable like if you like eating seafood you the like best. squid oh yeah Man, that's the fucking place to go. And then we had a um, a 24 hours in Amsterdam. So we just kind of like hung out. We went and saw the red light district, just walked through. You were with, you were with your sister? Yeah. That yeah, no. sucks. Yeah. So, but it was, it was wild to see because we were in uh, Amsterdam on like a Sunday. That was your first time? Yes. And so the streets are pretty bare, but then when you get close to the red light district, immediately busy as fuck. Mm -hmm. And the ratio is like 95% dudes to like 5% women. Uh, and there's just like, of course, like all the ladies in the windows and all that kind of stuff um but it was just like so rammed with just dudes and it's a weird vibe it's a weird vibe i don't know if i would ever i've never purchased sex and i don't know maybe i'll do it there for the novelty but i was like ah, it, it just seems like i don't even know if i could get hard like being like oh you go in this room with a chick and you pay for it and you like i've heard from buddies who've done it that the it's almost like you're fucking through like a plastic sheet or something like it's completely like she's like almost cellophane which no. i don't know no no okay then yeah I didn't no know. it's like any other well i'll tell you my experience yeah uh 
but no, continue about. I'll tell you after. But. No, well, yeah. And then we so we just walked through and like saw all the shit. Um, and it was just like cool to see. And I was like, well, I got to come back here with like one of my boys. You got to come back for yeah. You got to do that with your with your boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that and that honestly, like, it's cool. You got to go to Amsterdam with your sister or yeah. like do that whole like experience with your sister. But like going with your friends, it's like another. It's yeah. like kids in a candy shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were like 19 when we went for the first time. Mm-hmm. We didn't know what to expect. Uh, but, it, you know, when we got there, we were like that. We were like, oh, we don't know. Yeah. Maybe not. You know, we're not going to do that. We'll go check it out, you know. Yeah. But then uh, I was talking to my cousins in London. Mm-hmm. And they're like women. They're grown-ass women. Yeah. They're like, what do you mean you're not going to? You're not gonna do it. Yeah, like, yeah, you gotta yeah. go window shopping. I was like, if the ladies are telling me to go window shopping, I, I guess gotta it's, go. Yeah, it's not taboo. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, it's part of the culture. Yeah, yeah. So we get over there, and you know, my buddy had been living in Breda for a while. Like he was going to college over there. Breda's like a town outside of Amsterdam, a few hours by train. Yeah. And so he met us in the city. He took us all around, and uh, he knew a lot of the prostitutes because he would come into Amsterdam on the weekends with his buddies. Yeah. So he would like knock on on windows, and they'd yeah. come out and be like, "What do you want, Kevin?" You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. What do you want? Yeah, and he's like, my boys are visiting from Florida. Like, they just got into town. I want, yeah. I'm trying to show them a good time. And yeah. and she goes, okay, like, you know the deal. 50 bucks, suck and fuck. And he's yeah. like, all right, who's going with Monica? And yeah, we're like, yeah. all right, I'll I go. Guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my first one was, she looked like uh, Ivanka Trump. Oh, nice. Yeah, super hot. Mm-hmm. I get inside with her. And uh, it's just, uh, the room is all red. Yeah. It's all like just, if these lights were red, it feels like that. Yeah. And then uh, the bed that they have is like a wooden bed with like a like a sheet on okay. it. Okay, yeah. And uh, she puts a condom out on a table. She goes, do not touch that. And then she takes out a couple paper towels. By this point, she goes, drop your pants, put your clothes over there. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Patty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you drop your clothes, put them on like a chair or whatever. She's like, you want some music? And I'll never forget this. I go, yeah, sure. And then she just starts blasting Katy Perry. And I'm like, I don't know if I... I don't know if I would have chose Katy Perry, but all right, whatever. I'm also not a music guy yeah, right? I don't, when I yeah. have sex. I guess I just, not that I would never be, it's just more so just like, I, I'm not thinking about it. I don't think about music and I also like the noises. Right, I like yeah, that, I, like, like, I like the noise and getting yeah, into it. Yeah, also, yeah. I'm not, the first thing I'm not thinking about when I get undressed in front of a girl I really like is, you know what would make this better? Van Halen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she starts blasting Katy Perry and like, uh, I get undressed and now I'm just naked and I'm 19. So yeah. like getting a boner at the, at 19 was like all you got to do is say hi yeah yeah and, and i'm like, good yeah so i was ready to go she puts the paper towels like i'll never forget this she breaks it over your dickhead yeah and like pushes the paper towel all the way down yeah and then puts the condom over, over that your, yeah and then so basically the condom covers the paper towel at the end yeah so no juices are getting on you at any point yes and then she lays on her back and then you just go to town yeah and then you basically go until you come yeah but i was wasted and I just kept asking her questions because I was very infatuated. Yeah. I'll never forget this. I, I go, while I'm like riding her, I'm like, so how long have you been doing this? And she goes, please <laughs> shut up. <laughs> and I was like, come on, like it's all it's all come good. <laughs> and I think she told me like it was like 10 years or something. Yeah, she's a vet. And then I started doing the math in my head. I was like, well, if you take out like sick days. And vacation. Yeah. We'd be doing this maybe like five days a week, three yeah. out of 365 days. I was like, whoa. I, I, I verbalized this. I said, oh, I think I ha- I'll have like over 10,000 Eskimo brothers. Yeah. And she was like, get out. <laughs> 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 and then uh, I literally had to get dressed. Yeah. And uh, I walk outside. And when you walk out, as you saw, like there's a line out oh, the yeah. door. Yeah. Just guys like waiting. And yeah. I'll never forget one guy looks at me and goes, how was it? And I go, uh, you're going to love her. She's, gonna- <laughs> she's a character. Yeah, she's a character. She's great. She's great, Monica. I had a great time. And then, uh, you know, and then it's funny about that is like, you know, you don't just like leave the red light district after you're done. Like you yeah. go to do other stuff. Like you got yeah. the, you got the peep shows, you got the yeah. sex shows, you got the, what Lizzo got canceled for, the banana, the yeah, banana yeah, yeah, bar. Yeah. You, you got to do that. Yeah. Uh, cause that's the other thing. If you're not going to fuck a prostitute, that's fine. I get it. But if you, if you're going to be in the red light district, you got to use all the things, the activity, yeah, live sex shows, all that kind of shit. Yeah. The peep show is the funniest thing to me. Yeah. It's at this place called the sex palace. Yeah. I don't, you've definitely walked by for sure. For sure. Sex says sex palace got stars, like shooting stars, like out of like the, uh, the neon lights. Yeah. And <laughs> you walk in, it's two cent euro. So you walk in and it's like a bathroom stall, but it's like yeah. a ring. Yeah. Like it's like a room with like a like a bunch of stalls and like a circle. Yeah. And you walk in, it's a black stall and like a gray screen. Yeah. And you put in the two cent euro yeah. and like a like a fucking arcade game. The screen yeah. just drops. Yeah. And then there's a girl on the turntable just like using a dildo 
to like basically like you know get off. Yeah. But what's funny is you see all the other dudes <laughs> in the ring. <laughs> so my buddies all went into like other stalls and we we're like she's like basically fisting herself with this fucking dildo. Yeah. And we're in the stall just cheese and looking at each other like, like wait. <laughs> <laughs> But then it's funny because I was like, I'm not just going to waste it. So I came on the wall oh, yeah. and I fucking walk out. There's a couple waiting to get in after me. And I go, wait, wait, you're not going to want to go in there right away. Yeah. And then some guy that works there comes in with like a pressure washer and hoses I, down the wall oh, for the next couple yeah. to come in. It's fucking bananas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mind you, you're not sober the whole time. You're, you're fucking wasted. Yeah, yeah. You're not doing that sober. No, you're getting fucking a little bit fucking loose. There's Dude, no way you want to do that sober. No, no, absolutely not. Because the no. next day you wake up and you go. I got to get tested. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll never forget. My, we got back and uh, we were in college. So we all went to like different schools or whatever. I called my buddy and, and he was uh, he was like, you getting tested? I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really Absolutely. Like. Yeah. And I went to my uh, my school clinic. Yeah. Or the, you know, the med school clinic. Whatever. Yeah. And I'll never forget like the hottest girl, like med school assistant oh. was like, you know, working. And the lady that was checking my balls or whatever was like, would you mind if the med school assistant does it? And I go, ah, not her. You know, yeah. <laughs> and she, I was like, whatever. So yeah, she she sat there and as she checked my balls and they had to ask me questions. They're like, so uh, do you think you have something? And I was like, no. And they were like, well, have you hooked up with somebody that you uh, in the past like 10 days? And I was like, yes. And then they were like, okay, did you know this person? And I was like, no. no. Oh, yeah. And they were like, do you have reason to believe they had something? And I was like, no. no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, it was very safe. Yeah, The yeah. paper towel absorbed a lot of the- Come on, <laughs> she took proper precaution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, you got to go back. Dude, no, I'll go back for sure. And then after Amsterdam, I went alone to Berlin. Oh, which uh, is another, it's like the same vibe. Berlin's a crazy party yeah. city. And they like, they're very sexually liberated. Yes. Over there. So Berlin was super fun. And I'm what I did in Berlin was I did a bunch of shows. Great like, shows. Yeah, yeah. Great, the, shows. great, if people don't know, Berlin has the largest English speaking um, uh, comedy scene outside of, in the, in Europe, outside of the UK. Mm. So tons of great shows. Uh, they have a really funny concept of how shows work over there. Because they'll have, they have open mics and, and book shows. Yeah. But their open mics are just book shows that you don't get paid on. Right. That's what an open mic is out there. So they're still packed with audience. The comics are all booked. So I was talking to some comics. They're like, I went to an open mic in New York and it was horrible. They're like, there was just all comics sitting around. There's a list of like 50 people on the list. I'm like, yeah, that's a real open mic. Yeah, that's yeah. what an open mic is. Yeah. Um, but it, that was really good because um, doing the shows out there, you meet the people who live in Berlin and comics are the same no matter where the fuck you go. So immediately people you can relate to, they're like, hey, you want to hang out? And we did a, I did a whole bunch of shit with comics out there we went to this place called holtzmark okay. which is basically like a bunch of like wooden shops right on the water and you can get like beers and food and all the stuff and like just sh sit in the water like fucking uh in the sun and drink beer and just hang out and shoot the shit all day yeah. that was fun as fuck the food was great out there um and we did a lot of the clubbing which you understand why Europeans kind of shit on Westerners for our ability to club yeah. because they do do it a hundred times better than we do. Well, they go uh, for days on end. They go for days and they are all about like techno, at least in Berlin, they love like their techno yeah. electronic music and they'll have it in like, they love like this industrial feel. Like, have you seen Blade 2? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, club yeah, yeah, scene yeah, yeah. In like Blade, in the beginning, uh, the, or no, or in Blade One, he walks into like a club, or somebody, somebody's like in a club, whatever, and the lady like bites. She, you know what I mean? The guy gets bitten or whatever. I don't remember Blade One? I just remember it the, might have been Blade Two. It, Blade Two, the club scene is when they go into the club to like kill those like morphed vampires, right? And they uh, they're all like walking around, and when you see that. Like, I saw Blade 2 fucking, I don't know, I was like 13 or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, who parties like this? <laughs> yeah. Up until I went to Berlin, I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> yeah, who the are. Germans. The Germans party <laughs> like that. Yeah. Like fucking, what's it called? Uh, John Wick, like those club scenes where it's like, yeah. it's hundreds of people just dancing in like an underground warehouse. It's like, yeah. yeah, that's what they do. They love like industrial concrete type shit. One we went to was, we went to like the belly of a warehouse. It's It looks like Saw. The DJ was playing behind... Um, a fucking like uh, 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 uh like a prison gate mm -hmm. like uh, like bars like prison bars and they are just like b blasting fucking smoke in there with smoke machines and everyone's just like standing and dancing high on ecstasy or ketamine or some fucking mm -hmm. thing and it was so I didn't have drugs the first time we went so we're like we'll try to find drugs in there but the Germans are so responsible with their drug use that I ask a guy I'm like hey you know where I could get some like uh, Molly or something and he goes you don't want to buy drugs in here. 
That no, horrible German accent. But he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't want to buy drugs in the club. <laughs> You're like, wow, where'd that Russian guy come from? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the next time we went, so we want, we were like planning for this place called Kit Kat. Kit Kat, there's Kit Kat and Burkind are two of the more like sex focused ones. Burkind is a world famous club. It's, uh, if you're talking about like industrial techno, it's in an abandoned nuclear facility and it is technically a gay club, but it's like everyone goes because it's like the biggest club out there. They're very choosy about who they let in. So you can wait in line for like an hour and a half, get to the front and the the, like, the bouncers are even famous. That's how uh, popular this place is. They'll be like, you can't come in. No, you don't have the look. You don't like your style. Uh, they're, they really try to cultivate a certain type of vibe in this place. Um, and I've heard of stories of Burkind where they'll have like orgies in there. They have, There's this guy called Piss Guy. Oh, yeah, he stands at the top. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he sits in the bathroom, like in the in the urinals. Uh huh. And then when so when you go to take a piss, he's like he's like, well, you can piss in the urinal, or you can just piss all over me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and you're uh, and which is like I I didn't go to Burkine, but it it puts you in this like dilemma where you're like. Well, I don't know if I want to piss on piss guy because I don't. That doesn't do anything for me. I don't want people to think I like pissing on piss guy. Right. But at the same time, I'm just throwing this piss away. It's like if someone went to get cans out of my recycling, and I was like, No, 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 you can't have those. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no, I'm gonna use those. Yeah, I'm gonna use them exactly. <laughs> So I heard all this stuff about Burkheim, but I heard of how hard it is to get in. So I was like, I don't want to go through that bullshit. So Kit Kat is more sexual. My buddy went to Kit Kat and he's like, there was a lady in there who was playing a harp and like masturbating. Like, like there, he's like, it was uh, people were fucking all over the place. Like, so I was like, I gotta go to Kit Kat. So me and a, guy, a comic who I met out there, I was like, we got ready to go to Kit Kat. Like, I bought like these black pants and fucking like a tight wife beater. Like, I was like, I'm yeah. go, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna get in this place. We we get to where Kit Kat is. There's like a large amount of dudes waiting to get in and we're like whatever the girls will be in there uh there's even a dude who was literally just wearing like belts like yeah. he just had like belts all over his body like leather straps and then a metal cock piece on <laughs> and so we're like well we're in the right place this has to be where it is <laughs> you going in to go have sex you going to play hockey bud yeah <laughs> <laughs> you got your metal jock trap <laughs> We get to the front of the line, and the bouncer asks us English or German, and we're like, "Oh, English." And he goes, "Like, okay, it's Renegade Night," and we're like, "Sick, we're Renegades, we love this." Yeah. And he goes, "It's a gay fetish night," and we're like, "Oh." And he goes, "Are you gay?" And we're like, "No." And he goes, "You can't come in." That was it. <laughs> that was it. We didn't get it. in, so we ended up going to this different club that was. Uh, it was like. Uh, a bunch of uh, apartment buildings, like the courtyard in the center of a bunch of apartment buildings. One apartment building was abandoned or not in use. And th on three different floors, there was a DJ on every floor. And so you could hang out in this courtyard where there's like fairy lights and all this stuff and do your drugs and then go into the the one of these buildings and then just like party in front of one of these DJs and just have a fucking sick time. It was, and I, I stayed there till like 9 a.m. Yeah. Um, uh, and then went home and fucking crashed super yeah. hard yeah we we did berlin at the uh tail end of our trip mm -hmm. and then one thing we weren't prepared for i always tell people i go if you're gonna go to berlin go at the beginning because mm -hmm. cash only on most places yeah, yeah, cash yeah. only and like by then we had no cash yeah. we were just relying on our credit cards for everything yeah. so most places we went to they're like we don't take card and i'm like this is fucking bullshit yeah so that was stressful then we did we went to sisyphus because we wanted to we wanted to get into a club yeah because we knew like we're three dudes from yeah. America. Yeah, like we're not getting in. Yeah, they're very most clubs. Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll not. They're just like you're not. You're not what we want. So everybody and rightfully so. Yeah, like we're we're dirtbags. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not contesting it. Yeah. Uh, so everybody was like, try Sisyphus. Yeah. And so we were like, all right. They're like, that's where the locals go. Easier line to get in, and like you don't have to wait too long. Like it's a two hour wait, maybe. Yeah. So we went, waited in line. Everybody told us they're like, don't act crazy in line. Don't try to be loud. Just mm -hmm. stay in line. Keep quiet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get to the front, and the guy that's you know, it's like a circus vibe. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot. Of, it's like freak show themed, yeah. pretty much. And like the guy who's like checking IDs, he's got like tattoos on his eyes. Yeah, he's got like the gauges that like bring his earlobes all the way down. Yeah, you huge know, like circles. You can put a football through it or some shit. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. And I'm looking at this guy like if I'm supposed to feel like I fit the vibe, and that's the guy who's yeah. checking the vibe. Like me and this guy would never hang out. No. Yeah. So like we're about to get fucked. Yeah. 
So we get to the front and he looks at us. He goes, oh, right this way. He goes, you guys? We're like, yes. He goes, right this way. And he walks us and <laughs> he goes right through that door and pushes the door open. And we go, oh, great. And as soon as we walk out, we're right back out on the street. Oh, <laughs> he's like, fuck. He's like, have a good night. <laughs> and then shuts the door and we're like, shit. God damn. See the whole line and everybody's looking at us like, what did we do wrong? Anybody, uh, you guys have any idea what we need to do? Like, how do we get in? And we're like, dude, we just got fucking denied. I yeah, got yeah, yeah. on my face. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know what I could have possibly you know, absolutely done. absolutely done different to try and get in here. But the guy, the guy in front of us had a backpack on. He's like, I come here every week. Yeah. And he just had a backpack on and a pole. I go, I, I, if I'm checking the door, I'm not letting you in. The backpack, they like the backpack because they think like, oh, when you get there, you're going to change into something that's something more. else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I brought a backpack when we went to this place, Renata, but that place was, I think everyone got in there. They right. they were super chill about it, yeah. Um, but they yeah they're very strict about who they like. They're yeah. they're like we're cultivating a vibe. You're not the vibe, so yeah. you can't fucking come in. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine talked about getting into Burkind, and he was with this like he was with his buddy and this like basically model like this super hot chick. And they they wait in line to get into Burkind. They really really wanted to go. They get to the front of the line, and they were like, I was like, I'm not letting you in. And and she was they were like, Oh no, we got like outfits in our bag. Like we're gonna change. And he care. was like, No. Nah. And she was like, The girl was like, I'll show you my tits. And he was like, All right. And she pulls her tits out, and the way they describe these tits <laughs> are like fucking like they glowed or something. Like they were amazing. And the guy went like. Uh, sorry, I can't let you. In. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, but if you want to hang out later, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, like uh, nope, offer's nope. done. Kids um, are gone, dude. We we did. Uh, we waited to Kit Kat and Bergheim to the last day. Yeah, Sunday is like they say that's what the best day. Easiest to go to time to get in. Yeah, it's the easiest time to get in in the morning, and Sunday is also the best day because the headliner comes on. Yeah, on Sunday. Imagine. Yeah. Like, for those listening, imagine, like, going to a place, and you get there on, like, a Friday, and you're like, all right, like, we're going to see this DJ. And they're like, well, no, no, he doesn't start playing till Sunday yeah. afternoon. And they and the people go there. People will go to Burkheim with, like, toothbrushes. And, yeah. like, you, like, you live in the club. You live in the club. For, for like, at, like, you'll have a maybe a friend who lives close by, and you'll get your stamp so you can get back in. And you'll stay there for, like, fucking 18 hours. Yeah. And then be like, okay, we're all going to go crash at so-and-so's house for, like, five hours, get a quick sleep in, and then go back and party for, like, another 18 hours. Yeah. It's fucking crazy, the party culture. Our taxi drivers were telling us, they were, like, they pick up people all the time that, like, you know, they go in there on a Friday, come out on a Monday. Yeah. And then uh, he'll get they'll get in the car and be like, what day is it? Like, yeah. <laughs> they don't even know. You, you can't use your phone while you're in. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. They, um, but uh, yeah, I'll never forget. We we got there at 10 a.m. We had just gotten denied from Kit Kat. Yeah. I mean, it was absolutely not happening. Yeah. I mean, the lady lo the lady was looking at us and she just goes, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> and, I was like, ah. and then my buddy was like, come on, we got to try burger. And I was like, all right, just say we tried it. Yeah. Let's go do it. We get there. Luckily, it was like a 20 minute line, which yeah. is not very rare that's not normal yeah it's usually five to six hours yeah 45 minutes is short yeah very short so we get in and like i'm i'm telling my buddy i'm like dude just shut up yeah like do not say a word let's mm -hmm. just stay as straight face as possible and just let's see what happens mm -hmm. and i go and i'm telling you right now if one of us gets in and the other one doesn't please let him go go yeah you gotta go so I look at my buddy, we go in, or we get we get to the front, whatever, and the guy literally they don't even talk to you. Mm -hmm. They they looked at him and they went and they just shook it they shook they shook their heads. Yeah. And then so they, they waved him forward and he had to leave. Yeah. And then they look at me and they they gave me an honest look. Mm -hmm. They were like, Yeah. And then <laughs> and then wave me through. But for oh. a second I was like, Am I about to fucking do it? it? Yeah. If I about to do it, don't do this to me. <laughs> and then when they waved me through, I was like, all right. I mean, I'll take yeah. that look. I mean, yeah. they didn't give him a chance. Yeah, they're like, they're like fuck you, buddy. You don't got it. Looked you don't at me. They're yeah. like, ah, not today. Yeah. Maybe the look they gave me was like, not today. But try, yeah, maybe another day. Uh, yeah, <laughs> change was, a few things. Put on some running shoes. We want to know that you're gonna dance. Yeah. Like, yeah, you look a little gayer. Yeah, I didn't look gay at all. No, like they, you can go super gay. You can like literally come in like just a gimp suit and be like, yo, this is what I'm gonna wear. And yeah. they're like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But they, they also do this thing too. Where I've heard stories where like, cause I, I, uh, weirdly enough, I hooked up with this girl in Ibiza who's from Munich, mm -hmm. and uh, she does a lot of work with the head bouncer at Bergheim. He's a photographer during the day. Mm -hmm. His name's Sven. Have you ever seen this guy? Sven is the guy. He's yeah. the famous guy. Yeah, yeah. He, he wasn't there when I was there. Okay. I partly wanted to just get denied by Sven. Yeah. Uh, but she's friendly with Sven because mm -hmm. they do like a lot of like photography shoots. Together. Yeah. And, uh, she was telling me that like, 
he'll say like some days people come in in like full on suits. Yeah. And he'll let them in. Cause like he just he likes to fuck with people like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or he he uh, he got interviewed in GQ. And mm-hmm. He's like quoted by saying he's like, there like GQ asked him like, so what does it take like really? And he was like, there is no, there's no, there's no like rule. Yeah. He's like some days I'll wear full full white. Yeah. And people look at me and they go, oh, was I supposed to wear white, white tonight? Yeah. And he's like, no, it's just it's your vibe. Like yeah, they're doing a vibe check. Yeah. Pretty much. It's like it's honestly, it's benefiting you too. Mm-hmm. Cause like you get into Kit Kat Club on Gay Fetish Night, and then yeah, no, you're not gonna want to be there. Exactly. That was the thing where I was like, some people. I've told this story to people, and they're like, you should have lied. I'm like, no, because then if I got in, somebody's gonna reach for my dick, and I'm gonna be like, whoa, and he's gonna be like, what the fuck are you doing in yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here to have a crazy gay orgy, and you're fucking it up. Yeah, you're ruining the train. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were supposed to be the conductor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was looking to you. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that place. Uh, that place is insane, but it's definitely a place you got to go at the beginning of the trip. Yeah, 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 yeah. And definitely a place that you want to invest money in, mm-hmm. like into the clothing. Yeah. Because if you're, because I went out in like black shorts and like a black shirt, you need more. You need yeah. leather. Some comics are telling me they're like, dude, just wear your belt around your neck. Yeah, that and might I, work. And I should have done that. Yeah. And I was like, nah, I'm not gonna fucking totally. Because then if you don't get into these places, now I'm just now I'm just got a belt around my neck. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just in a city looking like a goddamn freak, dude. <laughs> and, and even because I'm a dive bar guy, I'm like, I'm gonna go to a dive bar. They're gonna be like. Like, ah, this loser didn't get in. Yeah, <laughs> you failed. Failed. Go hang yourself in the back, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> when I we stopped at a fucking uh, convenience store to, before we went and tried to get into Kit Kat. Yeah, because we're like, oh, we'll get like some Gatorades and shit because we're gonna be in there for a fucking while. Right. Um. So we stopped in this convenience store and we're picking up some stuff. And this like Middle Eastern uh, cashier at the fucking uh, convenience store goes like, uh, because I'm wearing this tight tank top and these black pants. He goes, you're what the kids call sus. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, man, I'm trying to get into a sex party. Like, no fucking He's like, yeah, you are getting into a sex party. Yeah. I don't know if it's the party you want. Oh, dude. But yeah, but fun ass place. Fun ass place. It's cool. But this trip to Japan, I'm fucking. I'm how, long, how long are you going for? Going to go for two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks in Japan. Uh, the plan is to do like five days. Tokyo. Okay. Um, I think they have comedy there. Yeah, I'm gonna do one show. Okay. And so the plan is same thing, like do a show, meet comics, and then fucking Great. uh see what that sort of snowballs into. But we got stuff planned, like I'm going with one of my boys. Yeah. We were gonna go like sumo wrestling, professional wrestling, baseball, fucking I talked to this dude who runs this page called Drunk in Japan. Okay. Uh and he, uh I was like, Hey man, do you live in Japan? Because I followed him my feed is all Jap- like it's thirty percent Japan right now because I'm every time I see something. I'm saving it to a profile or sending it to my buddy. So my algorithm is just like, you want Japan shit. Right. Um, so this page came up called Drunk in Japan. Hilarious. Just people shit face in Japan, like puke all over the ground. <laughs> 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 I I follow him and then he follows me back. So then I reach out and I'm like, "Hey man, do you live in Japan?" And he's yeah. like, I, "He's like, yeah." And I'm like, "Oh, I got this like itinerary of stuff. Like, do you have any advice on where I can go?" And he's like, "Oh, you're coming. You're going to Hiroshima because we're going to do a day where we go to Hiroshima, go see the museum, uh, and also Hiroshima is apparently the best place to see baseball." Uh, oh, like wow. and they their baseball culture out there is fucking huge, yeah. dude. Like you know how when you're watching baseball in America, they always have like the the song a guy plays when he walks up to the mound. Right. In Japan, I, I don't know if this is true. This is what I heard. When the dude is walking up to the mound, everyone knows the song and they sing the song sing. as he's fucking walking up to the mound. Yeah. Like they're about that shit over there. Um, I like that. I saw a thing recently where their high school. High school or college baseball, uh, there's a huge tournament that happens annually. As many people watch that as watch the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's massive. So I was like, we're going to go to Hiroshima. We're going to go to the museum, and we're going to fucking do baseball. This guy, this drunken Japan guy, was like, oh, uh, we're we're planning this um, drifting, like uh, drifting through like the mountains of fucking uh, uh, Hiroshima. He's like, do you, if you guys want, you can come and like sit in one of the cars as they're like drifting through all these mountains. You're going to sit in one of the cars? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like while they're going, you're while gonna be in it. Yeah, and while they're fucking drifting through the fucking like Tokyo. Drift. Yeah, that's I fucking did. nuts. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. He's like, okay, if it lines up, we'll set it up. So that's a huge maybe right now. But yeah. I'm like that'll be fucking sick. Yeah, that's dude. insane. So that's a big thing we got. We want to do. There's like the Golden Street, which is like a bunch of parties and a bunch of bars. We're gonna get drunk and shit. Uh, I'm learning Japanese as well. Really? So I've been duolingoing Japanese like an hour every day. So I got like a little bit of stuff like fucking um, eki. Uh, no, Ike, 
Ike Wadoko Desuka, where's the train station? Uh-huh. Um, uh, Dozo Yoroshiku, uh, nice to meet you. Um, fucking <laughs> Konbawa, good evening. <laughs> yeah, so I got like, I'm gonna get like a like a foundation of Japanese, so when yeah. I go, I'm not completely fucking stupid. Yeah. And apparently the Japanese really like that. If you can speak their language, yeah. they're, you're, you're like, you're like, oh, you put in the effort to learn before you came here. Yeah. So I'm excited. I, I'm, I've never been more excited for a trip. Dude, I, that's amazing. And I'm watching a ton of anime right now. I'm just in Japan mode. And yeah. you gotta watch Fast and Furious Tokyo. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude. Yeah. Come on, man. You gotta pull the e-brake. <laughs> dude, dude. I'm gonna be in that car like, yeah, I don't drive very well, so yeah. the whole time I'm just gonna be like, holy fuck. We're flying off this mountain yeah yeah dude that's gonna be nuts yeah yeah and the food out here is insane dude we got so many food places saved uh you, oh, can, you can try to do that that subway sushi place the michelin star place zero i don't i don't know if we're gonna try and do that because i think you have to reserve like months in advance yeah and that's like uh, uh there's so much good food there and i'm sure that it place is fucking incredible yeah. but it's like i i I don't know if we want to put that much effort into going to a place. We're yeah. keeping it pretty low key. Um, we're going to do a lot of food in Osaka. Osaka is apparently like one of the best food cities in Japan. Yeah. Um, and that's also a place where my buddy has tattoos. Yeah. And they're like strict on tattoos in Japan. Like, Are they actually? Yeah. They want, if you have tattoos, they want you to cover them up. Really? Uh, but if you go to Osaka, Osaka is apparently run most, I don't know, this is all hearsay shit I hear, uh, but by the Yakuza. And the Yakuza is also, like, they're all about tattoos. So if you want to go to, like, their their bathhouses, like their saunas and hot spring shit, mm. you, if you want to do that in Tokyo, you can't have tattoos. They won't let you in with tattoos. Mm. So if you want to do it, you got to go to Osaka. So when we go to Osaka, that's where we'll fucking do that shit. Because I was going to say, my best friend back home, uh, his dad is, like, one of the biggest tattoo artists in the world. Mm-hmm. And his his specialty is Japanese traditional tattoos. They're about it. Like yeah, they, yeah, yeah. There's certain areas where they're about it, but they, yeah. I think it's seen as like a criminal thing. That's crazy. Like if you have tattoos, you are a criminal. Yeah. Uh, Patty's showing Osaka Omurice guy. Do you know this guy? Uh, no. What the hell is this? Legendary viral fluffy Omurice. Oh, okay. This guy came up on my feed the other day and he does the whole like, <laughs> he like sings and everything and he like fucking flips out the, the Omi rice. Like Omi rice is basically like they make like fried rice yeah. and then they put like a perfectly made omelet on top of it and they cut it and like spills over top. Uh, it's so good. Dude. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah. 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 He's in Osaka. Oh, I'll, I might've, I might've put him down. Uh, um, hopefully you get to check out that guy. Yeah. Like uh, the amount of food I'm going to eat out there is going to be atrocious. And we're also like, it's going to be, I think it's going to be, it'll be harder for me, easier for my buddy. Cause he's white. Cause I've heard, I've, I don't know. I don't want to speak for entire of Japan, but I've heard being black in Japan. They're like, not like, they're, <laughs> it's not the, the most attractive. It's not the vibe. He's not the vibe. <laughs> like, guys, come on. I just got back from Berlin. They wouldn't yeah. let me in either. Come on. So, but we're going to try and get laid. Like, that would be an ultimate pull if we can get laid in oh, Japan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang out with some Japanese girls? Yeah, I wonder exactly. what the hinge game is like out there. I don't know. We're going to we're gonna find out. It's just the same. You look up a girl's like, three interests. The office. <laughs> <laughs> traveling. Oh. Dad jokes. You're like, come oh, on, man. Even here, dude? <laughs> even here? <laughs> um, yeah, I hear the 7-Elevens there on Tom Segura's podcast. He talked about it. The like, Combini. Uh, the 7-Elevens are insane. Yeah, yeah. Like, you could take a shit there. Yeah, yeah. The the, the um, convenience stores there, you can do everything from, like, buy a suit to, like, get a full breakfast to, like, do... Yeah, it's like... It is, like, unbelievably detailed. It makes yeah. you wonder, like, what we're doing wrong. Uh, I think what is happening in Japanese culture is there's, uh, there's a lot of... Sorry. Uh, there's a lot of policing of other of like your other man like your your the people you live around yeah. like it, it you don't break uh social faux pas like like you you see people are like really quiet on the subway you don't talk loud on the subway if you're walking up the stairs to like get out of the subway there's one that's for down and one that's for up and the down will be empty but you only walk in up they they follow the rules uh and in order for something like that to exist in America, you would have you would need people to not have as strong of American individualism, which is like a core tenant of America. Yeah, it's like, like I can do whatever the fu- uh, the, yeah I, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Mentality is very strong. Exactly. So people would, if you had a convenience store that had everything, people would disrespect the fuck out of it and take shit and steal shit and do because that's what happens in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you just can't like you look at a city like New York and a city like Tokyo. Tokyo has a larger population, but is pristine 
pristine, very, very clean. Very clean in New yeah. York, of course, we're in New York right now. It's a very the cleanest. I very mean, clean. I mean, come on, very clean. Rats <laughs> everywhere. Dirt. It's a dirty city. Yeah. But it's because, yeah, it's a Americans live with a completely different mentality that has its benefits of like, yeah, you can make a lot of money here. You can make a career for yourself here. It's like you can fucking be like, I'm going to come here and still have that like uh, settler mentality of like, I'm forging a new path in a new career or in a new um, technology or something. And I'm going to make it a huge success in America, which I'm sure you can do in Japan as well. But they follow the rules. They follow the rules. Over yeah. There. So that's why I think we can't. Or if we did have shit over here, like I think there is a, a, a need for capitalism in, in America where you're if you have a convenience store that was so like had so many amenities like that people would be like okay well then everything's going to be more expensive mm -hmm. and it's going to be it defeats the purpose of it being a convenience store where i don't know if there's the same quest for uh capitalism in japan which i'm like i'm speaking out my ass here i haven't even gone yet. yeah they're like but, this guy has no idea what the fuck he's talking yeah, about yeah. <laughs> i could be completely wrong but yeah. that's uh it, it's just a you it's a you need to change the culture completely and i don't want people to hear me say that and be like oh he's shitting on america it's like no there's all these benefits to american individualism that makes america what the fuck it is but that and then there's negatives to being forced to follow a certain path in japan and having that uh, having those strongholds on your social culture yeah i mean i feel like we're going backwards you know i just went to cvs today i had to call the guy over to get me body wash yeah yeah, 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 yeah. like you can't sell suits you can't sell suits here yeah yeah no. <laughs> cvs is gonna start selling suits exactly. anytime soon if i need a fucking button when you gotta lock up your underwear yeah, yeah you can't fuck it <laughs> <laughs> you can't fucking have suits at the convenience store dude yeah yeah we're uh we're going back to spain this oh, summer oh nice yeah doing ibiza <sighs> Ibiza and Mykonos. That's going to be fucking sick. Yeah. And then Dublin for the, we went to Florida State. So we're. Who are you going with? Uh, just a few buddies from back home. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're doing Ibiza, Mykonos, and then Dublin for the Florida State Georgia Tech game. Oh, sick. Yeah. So we're like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But Spain, I don't, have you ever been to Spain? No. Yeah. Spain's fun. Yeah. Spain's a good time. I always say if I, if I didn't live in America, I'd probably move to Spain. Yeah. Yeah. Just cool, cool spot. Barcelona is like probably one of my favorite cities to like go visit. Um, there's a lot to do there. You can just get lost. Like I said, you can just get lost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everybody's, everybody's gorgeous. Yeah. And it's like a more chill yeah. culture. Yeah. Like, uh, I had a, a friend whose daughter works in like non-for-profit type shit. Yeah. And so she like, she'll go to like Africa and literally like dig wells. And yeah. she was talking to her daughter and she was like, yo, like I would like, or when you're done, you think you're going to move back to, uh, this was in, and she's. Oh, this was all in Canada. Yeah. And she's like, do you think you're going to move back to Canada? And she goes, fuck no. Mm -hmm. She's like, uh, why would I move? Like, uh, everything is all about, like, making money. Real estate's so fucking expensive. I'm going to move to Spain and, like, fucking sleep during the day and live affordably and just fucking have a relaxed, fun life that's about living. Yeah. Which is something that, like, I think... Americans are picking up on that a little bit more now. Like we had the hustle, hustle culture was like huge. Yeah. And now the critiques of the hustle culture are starting to come out in a big way where it's like, you shouldn't have to work 12 hours a day to just to make your living and everything come together. You should, you should be able to work a regular job and then go to the beach and then hang out with your friends and drink a fucking espresso in the middle of the day and chill. It's like, why not? It's like, what is, all this need for progression, it's not really making society so much better. We still have people who are dying from all these diseases. You can't afford to buy a house and all this shit is fucked where the Europeans are like, yeah, if you can just chill out, it's fine. Yeah. Just chill. Yeah. You should be able to live a life where you don't want to kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I call all my friends who have real jobs. I'm like, how's it going? They're like, that ah, just another day. Just, yeah. Just another day. I didn't fucking hang myself. And I'm like, Jesus, dude, like get out of that. Yeah. What are so, you doing? So I think you're like being like, I would move to Spain. I'm like, that sounds fucking awesome. Dude, yeah. Like you just said, I mean, like there's places you go to like middle of the day and you're like, why are you guys closed? And they're like, well, we, we got to take a nap. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. I'm like, uh, yes, it's dude. a fucking bar. And they're yeah. like, yeah, we're, we're taking a nap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're like, you want to take a nap? And I'm like, like I would love a nap. Love it's it. very infectious. Come in, take a nap. Yeah, we'll right. take, a, take a siesta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, you go to the beaches, ladies have their tops off. Yeah. You just yeah. see them boo. Oops. Yeah, and then and then you feel like a weirdo for looking. Yeah, you like look and you're like, <gasps> and they're like, don't. Yeah, come don't, on, come on. I have my tits out. Yeah, yeah, my tits are out. Yeah, what? 
<laughs> what, I can't take my tits out? What? what? Yeah. Oh, you see him? Okay, yeah. go back over there, asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's so... Oh, I got to put that on the list for sure. Is there a place you haven't gone yet where you're like, I got to go there? Uh, Definitely. Oh, now I've been told Krakow, Poland. Oh, really? Yeah, I hear Poland is actually super fun. Really? What's yeah. going on in Poland? Well, first off, I've heard this a couple years ago when I went over, I did uh, Edinburgh Fringe Festival. So mm-hmm. like, you meet a lot of like... Uh, you know, like you would in Berlin, you meet a lot of like uh, foreign comics. Yeah. And a lot of them, they have like a uh, different, like, cause you ask them, you're like, oh, is the goal like to get to America? Do this? And they're like, no, fuck no. Yeah. You're like, we don't care. Yeah. We, we got our own system. We over have here. our own system. They're like, yeah. I make, I know comics who are at my level, like six years in, who yeah. make a full living in London. Yeah. Like, like doing comedy. They don't yeah. work real jobs. Yeah. They just do comedy and they make yeah. their living yeah. and yeah. they're happy. And, uh, you know, I was asking them, like, okay, like, what, what do you like do? And they go, we just pick like pockets of the world that that love comedy because comedy has changed like everybody has youtube now yeah so youtube and netflix has like changed the game in a way where like all these like pockets of the world are starting to like take comedy in they love it but they have no outlet for it yeah stand up as an art form is now becoming it was like ultra american it was very very american of course like the british people are into it the canada we're right there and we consume endless american content yeah and now it's becoming like um, normalized across the world, where it's just the concept of stand up is like, oh, you can you can do this, yeah, 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 yeah. And so you know, they were saying that like these people, they they all speak English, they all understand jokes, yeah. They just have nobody regularly to like give it to them. So yeah. if you just go over there with like you know not having any fan base, it doesn't fucking matter. You yeah. just say I'm an American comedian going to perform at the local theater in Krakow. Yeah. The whole fucking city. Yeah. Yeah. Out. They're like, Oh yeah. We're yeah. coming out. Like people that I know again, my age group and my level, they're just like fucking selling out 1400 person theaters. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, then we just go fucking party all over and just all yeah. over the city. Hang the fuck out. Yeah. yeah dude. Um, There's this comic. I know Ari. I wish I could remember what he goes by for his last name. It's his last name's crazy long. He's Estonian. Okay. And he's like, he is like stop you on the street famous in Estonia. Okay. Like they cool. like he he like he he tours around there. Well, he did a tour where he sold like 20,000 tickets through the tour. He actually just got past the mothership and is doing a bunch of shit down oh, there. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, he's a very like a strange cuz he'll go on stage in like a fucking full like tracksuit and is like Eastern European vibe and yeah. people don't really know what to make of him but fucking hilarious yeah. dude. Um but yeah, he is like murdering it in Estonia and now is like making big waves. He was in Vancouver for a long time, made huge waves in the Canadian scene and now is fucking starting to crush it over here in the States. Yeah, too. Is yeah. This, is that him? That's him. That's him. Ari Mati. Yeah, Ari Mati. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. I, he was at when I went so. to the wedding in Greece. He was at the wedding. That's oh, cool. Him. That's yeah. how you met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Small world. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, cool. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it, it is interesting to see like what these guys do. I was just in Belfast in Ireland a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I was there visiting family. But while I was there, and that's the beauty of comedy. It's like. It's like having a skateboard. Yeah. Like once you get good enough for it, like you can go skate anywhere. Yeah. You just got to hit up the people, ask them if it's cool. Yeah. So I hit up these guys and they they let me in uh, to their club. They only have like one big club over there. It's like in this bar called Lavery's. But yeah. The comedy club is called Lavery's Comedy Club. Yeah. It sells out every Wednesday and Thursday because the whole city just wants something to yeah. do. On the weekends, they can't have shows. Because the whole city just wants to get fucked up. Oh, really? Yeah. That's fucked So up. when I was there, they were like, we actually have our first show, our first weekend show on Sunday. Yeah. Because uh, we're going to start and work our way backwards. We're going to see yeah. how Sunday goes and then get but, into Saturday and Friday shows. Yeah. But, you know, the guys that started that club, Aaron McCann and Colin Geddes, they're the two comics over there. They're like, the way the city looks at them is they're like local celebrities. My yeah. cousin from Ireland was with me and I took her into the green room and then we left and she goes how do you know those guys? And I was like, I don't know them. I just asked them to be on the show. And she goes, you know, they're like our, like, that's like our like, celebrity. Yeah. Like those are our celebrities. Yeah. And I was like, oh, she goes, I was like nervous in there. And I, was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Because when you, like, we don't see this a lot, like uh, in, in places like New York, LA, Austin, yeah. you, you can go on a show and see like five comics that we know to be great. Yeah. And the the city doesn't care. Yeah, They're just no, like, oh, I just I just went to a good show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But over there, they go, oh, these are these are our guys. Yeah. And they're good at this. We should like rally behind them. Absolutely. Yeah. So the whole city 
follows these guys and what they're doing and all their shit, yeah. which kind of you know reminds me of like your buddy Ari, yeah, who like you know he's from who the fuck is coming from Estonia? Estonia is like I think the entire population is like 1.5 million, and yeah. they and they probably all look at him and they go, "This is our guy, this is our guy." Yeah, anytime he's here, we ride for him. Oh yeah, and wherever he is in the world, we'll push the word. Oh yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's so cool. It, it's just changed. It's changed the game. It's it, like you used to think you had to come to New York to just become the person. Yeah. But I think for me, New York is just a place where I can work out and be the best version of myself. I do like, I will always stand by that. Like come to New York to be a great comic is still such an important thing. Yes. You don't have to you do don't it. You have to. Like there's hello. You look at fucking Ralph Barbosa. He's Dallas based. You yeah. look at fucking, um, Ali Sadiq. He's yeah. Houston. Oh, Ali like, uh, so Ali, Ali, yeah. Ali Sadiq's fucking hilarious. My favorite storyteller. Dude. And so the internet has changed the game where you don't have to move to these places. I love being in New York and I love in the New York scene and it's made me a much better comedian because yeah. it is stand up is still getting up, getting your reps and getting in front of the people. And then also when you're here, it's like if you were a fighter and you joined like American Top Team or like one of the yeah. best camps yeah. because then you're training with the best dudes. I um, one of my I think my first show in New York, I had to follow Sam Morell. And yeah. it's like, yeah, that's that's what you're doing now. That's and you better happened. be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I and I think that's the difference too. Like a guy like from South Florida. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he goes over to Belfast. Yeah. He's getting eaten alive. Yeah, on like yeah. a 300 a 300 person audience. Yeah. Like it, with these guys that are like the local town celebrities. Like those are their guys. They're yeah. like looking to see those guys. Yeah, and you go up there and you're just like, I'm from Florida. You know, if you go down to South Florida, I mean, it is it's pretty bad. Like what they got going. Oh, really? Because well, yeah. comedy doesn't thrive in places where people are living At the beach. happy. Yeah, yeah. They go outside. Yeah, it's, it's like, paradise. Yeah. You know, my my friends like they never had any relationship with comedy until I started yeah. getting into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you know they're like, who's who? Do should we watch? You know, they like you know sh the Shanes, the Louis. Yeah. But like. They don't know inside baseball. Like mm -hmm. they don't know like, oh, like like you're great. Yeah. Like if you went down, if they don't know you from your social media, like they're not going to a show. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't know. And they don't because they don't care. Yeah. But it yeah. it makes sense that they don't care. There's other shit going on. Right. Yeah. And I think also when you go to like Belfast and these other places, you have to deal with a completely different audience that don't know your references, they don't know your shit. So your jokes aren't hitting the same. Yeah. So you're already going at a disadvantage. Yeah. And they also like heckling and all that shit is like oh, yeah. the Oof. average Irish person is way funnier yeah. than the average fucking, I don't know, I grew up in Vancouver, the average Vancouver person. Yeah. Because they are like, they're so quippy and so fucking quick, they'll heckle you and get a huge pop. Yeah. And you got to be able to like be deal with that back and forth. You know, uh, fucking Jess Levin. I love Jess. So she went over there and Jess is a fucking very rough and tumble yeah. chick, like grew up in Jersey. So yeah. she when she went there, she loved it because she can deal with that shit. She can take the punches and fucking throw them right she back. She doesn't give a fuck. Doesn't give a fuck. No. Oh, yeah. 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 And you have to be able to do that if you're going to be traveling and going to places like that. Germany was way different because the Germans are so fucking polite. Right. So they'll just sit there and fucking absorb your stuff. But there were some things when I was doing the shows in Germany where I would talk about like your hoe phase or things that are maybe like not super acceptance of sexuality. And they're like, I don't even understand that concept. Yeah, because yeah. they're all they're so sexually uh, open. Yeah. Yeah. That they, they yeah, they look at you and they're like, why, why are you? Why I is actually taboo for you. I was talking to a porn star about doing porn in in America versus doing porn in Europe. And she was like, the porn in Europe isn't that good because it's not that taboo. Right. So when you're like a big porn star, you're not making that much money. You're not doing it on like crazy sets. You don't become like a celebrity because they're like, oh yeah, you're fucking on camera. That's cool. Uh, where if you yeah. do it in in America, it's like this whole like, there's this like shame and all this stuff where people are like, oh my God, it's so hot. It's so sexy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, you, if you want to become a superstar in porn, you almost need the taboos in order for people to glamorize it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think porn is actually becoming like less stigmatized oh huge yeah, yeah like yeah. i see more porn stars on social media now than i do actors in interviews yeah yeah the porn stars are like more interesting than actor than real actors oh yeah i knew who kazumi was before i knew who sydney sweeney was yeah yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. people are like you haven't seen sydney sweeney i'm like i don't know is she is she like who's she banging and yeah they're like no she's just an actress on euphoria and I'm yeah like, i got doesn't ring a bell. How many dicks can she do? <laughs> okay, yeah, literally. Uh, Kazumi had a 10-person gangbang on yeah. Whacked. So. Yeah, it was fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Hey, I appreciate it, This man. was super fun. 
I uh, hope to have you back at some point. Yeah. Uh, you have anything you want to plug? Um, yeah. Uh, if you want to come see me, I'm going to be in Florida. Great. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be in Orlando. I'm going to be in Dania Beach. Uh, that's where I'm from. Okay. Yeah. That's where I'm going to be there in September. Uh, uh, fucking. When, do you know when this is going out? Uh, I'll put it out next week. Okay, yeah. So then I'll, Orlando's coming right up. It'll be the 28th and 29th of March. Uh, and then for any other dates, go to chaterana.com. I got a bunch of tour dates coming up. Uh, if you want to catch me online, it's Little Dinky News on Twitch. And then for all my other platforms, Chaterana uh, on everything. C-H-E-D-U-R-E-N-A. Awesome. Dude, you heard the man. Go see him. He's fucking awesome. Super fucking funny. Uh, again, dude, so good to see you. Thank you, buddy. Uh, follow the pod uh, at Welcome to This. And uh, follow me at Brandon O'Brien. You guys are the best. All right. See you guys later.